Hi everyone, I'm Alfred. I would love to say that I don't know what I'm getting into. I would love to specify that I have no idea what I'm about to start, but I know exactly what I'm getting into. I'm a filthy homestuck and I have been for probably around a decade, I would say. I got in late, but late in homestuck, meaning like act four or five, I think. Yeah, that, that's still a long span of comic after that. I fucking love Homestuck. You may notice by the thumbnail art, but uh, I know all my stuff. I'm a pion. I used to be other signs, but my most recent uh, classification, I guess, is that I'm a Prince of Breath. I've always been a Durst Dreamer. That's one thing that's been always consistent about me. I've always been a Durst Dreamer. Uh, my true son is Pion, like Pisces and Breath. So, yeah, I know what Homestuck is. I know my sign. I know my class spec. I've read this comic for years. And every time I think I might get out, they fucking pull me back in. Uh, so to get some other stuff off my chest my favorite kid is Dave best ship is Dave and Jade although Dave and Roxy is good for reasons um Dirk is cool but Jake is best alpha kid Aridin's my favorite troll Kankri is my favorite uh alpha troll I actually liked the intermission the Midnight Crew intermission, the first one. Um, trying to think what else. I fucking hate Vriska. Vriska's possibly my least favorite character, although I also don't like Beck Noir. Um, this is, by the way, if you're not in on Homestuck, I would imagine you would have clicked off by now. But uh, this is going, this is a Homestuck fan game. For those who don't, don't actually know about this, this is a Homestuck game. Not a fan game, as it happens. Um, it was initially made in light of the adventure game that's coming out, Hive Swap, that has been coming out. It's working on it. Um, but this is a bunch of visual novel dating sims, I guess. Uh, but it's, you know, you're being friends with them, so it's a friend sim. See, I can wiggle it. So to be perfectly frank, I've never actually, uh... Sorry, I'm just looking at all these. Never actually played this game. Bought a bunch of... Bought every one of them, actually, in the Steam sale. But I have yet to play this game. So. I'll put a little thing that says that the gameplay starts later. Uh... But yeah, this is... I've had a long and confusing relationship with Homestuck, much like Homestuck has had with the real world. So. Wow. Holy shit, that's Doc Scratch. That's, that's a big deal. Alright. Bloodthirst and Brought Worst. Volume 1. You've just crashed that on a planet called Alternia and staggered from the smoldering wreckage of your ship. You're alone in a strange world, desperate for information, for provisions, and possibly been medical attention. But most of all, you're desperate for friendship. Won't someone on this godforsaken rock be your buddy? Any weirdo will do. You're not that picky. Hang on. What's this now? Is someone approaching? All right. We have Diamond uh, Chikali or Ardata Carmina. Um, so these are trolls. For those who have never read Homestuck, stop watching the video. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> it's uh, it's um, it's gonna be a lot of Homestuck lore in this fucking series. Anyway, a troll is a species from another planet. They're gray and they got horns. Their blood is all a bunch of different colors. That's reflected by the color of their stuff. So this 
girl, I assume. Uh, this girl has blue blood. This guy's got red blood. Red bloods are the lowest tier. These guys are like middle tier, you know, middle class. But these guys are the lowest class. Um, I like his big dumb hot dog horns. However, I do like creepy girls. Yes, someone's approaching. A strange gray skin alien clad in blue. Maybe they'll make for a good friend. Dear God. Oh, fuck. I have to think of names for every single character, huh? And just what are you supposed to be? Your stammering reply eventually conveys you're a lost traveler, hungry, and needing some medical treatment. You're also lonely and wouldn't mind making a new friend right about now. Why am I so creepy? I like how the save is a floppy disk, even though no one's used a fucking floppy disk in 30 years. My, oh my. I like your one freak eye, girl. Oh, how funny this is. How very droll, you. You want to be my friend? It's too much. This, this thing at my doorstep wishing to know me in any capacity. Oh, yeah, so, um, a lot of the story in Homestuck is conveyed with text. More so than the average webcomic. More so than uh, any written work in the English language, actually. Um... And that may sound like exaggeration, but if it is, it's only a little. I think Homestuck is honestly one of the longest things in the English language. <laughs> That's not a joke. Um, but a lot of it is conveyed in text logs, like friends texting each other. Um, and so trolls all have a quirk about how they type. Humans do too, but it's not so extreme. Like with humans, Dave never uses punctuation or capitalization and only rarely uses punctuation if he wants to be emphatic about something. Um, he writes, honestly, like a, like a, a comic or webcomic would write. Very passive. Um, whereas, like, Jade is, like, a lot of exclamation points and ellipsis, uh, but still lowercase. Trolls, on the other hand, have a very, very unique way of typing. And in the Homestuck text apps, because, yes, Homestuck fans are geeky enough that they have coded... Their own fucking text apps, you can actually set your own quirks. Um, so like Riska, the character I mentioned earlier, I hate her, but she's a good example. But she has a spider motif and a motif based around the number eight. So she, if she writes something for emphasis, she will write it eight times. If she's like stretching out a letter or a, a word, She'll make it like nine, or she'll make it like eight O's and O or something. She replaces B's with uh, eights and anything that rhymes with eight with the letter, the number eight, with the single number. And it looks like this girl writes her eyes with three eyes um, for reasons that appear to be because she's got three little eyeballs here. But anyway, that appears to be fine. I'm going to turn it down a little bit. Um, I'm definitely peaking my audio. I've recently turned up my audio. Um, I don't know when this is going to get posted, but it's I'm recording this as I was recording Dishonored. So, you know, let me turn myself down a little bit. Turn myself down to the music down a little bit. There we go. Uh, wishing to know me in any capacity. The hilarity somehow escapes my ability to capture with maniacal laughter. How rare. You apologize for being your presumptuous quest. You hang your head, turn around, and begin to walk away. And just what the fuck do you think you are doing? Who invited you to leave? Stop in your tracks obediently and turn to face her again. Your possibly broken ribs are throbbing in pain, but this does not strike you as the right moment to exhibit weakness. Yeah, trolls also have like a weird, um, like warrior culture kind of. Um, there's an impressive amount of con worlding and stuff uh, given to trolls. But trolls all, just adjust my microphone and turn my sound down. Hope that sounds better. Um, trolls are all very warlike, very aggressive, very fight ready. Uh, this girl appears to be no exception. I can only see this going well for me. It dawns on me we may have gotten off on the wrong saunter pod. Oh yeah, saunter pod is foot. Like pod, like foot, and saunter like walking. 
Yeah, trolls have a weird grasp of English for some reason. It's mostly just to make them sound weirder. Where are my manners, ghastly behavior on my part? After all, it isn't your fault you seem to be some sort of hideous freak, is it? And such a tragic creature cannot be held responsible for such a de devastating shortfall of social incompetence. I really would weep for you, really, except that crying out of three eyes at one gets a, at once gets a bit messy. So instead, I think I'll be saving my tears for someone less offensively worthless. You aren't sure if she's inviting you inside, or if she just, or if she just got you to stay a little longer so she can insult you some more. Try to remain stoic while your confrontational new friend decides to do, decides what to do with you. Unfortunately, you suffer slightly. Oh. Oh my, oh dear, you're sad. Mm -hmm. Oh dear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so amusing to me. Mildly entertaining, right? Endearing, rather. Sorry. Perhaps I'll decide later if it's endearing once I have more information. It's entirely possible I will retroactively decide it's disgusting. And yes, the text quirks do carry over into speak. It's something that they make a big deal out of in the comics. When people speak out loud to one another, they do still have the quirks. But for now, try to put yourself at ease, you completely pitiful fool. Not one more sniffle. Do you understand? You nod while practicing exemplary control over your nose. Have you gotten yourself so ag agitated? I wonder why. You have nothing to worry about from me. Of course, I will be your friend. Conditionally, I mean. There is a chance the designation will be formalized if you behave in ways that I approve of starting now. Let's call it a friendship in progress. Agreed? Your heart swells. This is what you've been waiting for. A new friend. Oh gosh. All you've been wanting to do is try not to fuck anything up at all. Possibly for many hours. Come into my hive. This way after me. You look like you you look like you could use nourishment. Yeah, trolls have hives. Um Yeah, I could I could write books about weird troll troll culture things. But trolls live in hives and they're not raised by other trolls. Adult trolls immediately go into the military and army. Um so they're raised by friendly animals. Uh, this animal's called a Lucis. I don't know what it is that whatever you are eats, generally, but it doesn't matter. You will eat whatever it is I have on hand, if I tell you to. How does that sound? How does it sound? <gasps> oh, we get choices. Cool. It sounds good. I'll do whatever you say. Obviously, it sounds good. You will definitely enjoy it. You will enjoy everything I provide you with and tell you to do. I can't imagine any sort of... Oh, they fucked up. There's an eye right there. Fuck, whoops. What did I just do? Anyway, I will assume that we share this philosophy when it comes to friendship. You say, oh, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. You nod as enthusiastically as you can without aggravating your broken ribs. You consider giving her a thumbs up as well until you realize one of your arms is probably broken too. You'll try to make sure she doesn't notice, though. It would probably leave a bad impression. Come with me. There's something I need your help with. Hell yeah. You follow her into her hive. It's a bit gloomy in here. I suppose she's going to fix you something to eat, as promised. Pass through a kitchen and out the other side to another room? Okay, you guess dinner can wait. This way. Try not to let any of your broken limbs slow you down. A good friend wouldn't allow such trifling physical ailments to cause me any inconvenience. Oh, my wife's home. Uh, fuck. Let me save. <laughs> Alright, hey, I'm back. My wife came home 30 minutes before her. she said she was going to. Alright, anyway. 
So, you guess she does know you're injured. Fair enough. You hobble a little faster, though, through another door into a much darker room. And now, down a flight of stairs. Hard to see. Torches along the wall ahead. A monstrous noise rumbles below. Don't mind her. She's just hungry. She's always hungry, though. What's that? You're hungry, too? I have not forgotten. What sort of piece of shit friend do you take me for? You didn't remind her that you're hungry. You hope... You thought it, though. Can't you read your mind? You hope not. It's gonna make this friendship in progress a bit awkward. So yeah, all the different casts of trolls, um, the blood color thing I mentioned, that is uh, the cast that they're in, the blood cast. All of them have a different uh, power. A power associated with them, at least. Not all of them can express it, but like they have a predisposition for that power. Um, Vriska could... What can Vriska do? Vriska had vision eightfold, so she could see a little bit into the future, but that was also because she was light. She could also mind control people, because she mind controlled Tavros and I think Terezi. That makes sense. Anyway, I guess that, um, okay, yeah, I guess she can probably read my mind. Here we are. This is where you will be most useful to me as a friend. Oh, no! You look around with a sense of relief. You see no sign of whatever hungry thing was grumbling down here. You are less relieved to see several other kids trapped in cages of various shape and size. One of them makes eye contact with you. Boy, is the same kind of alien as her, horns and all. Dark red symbol on his shirt. His expression seemed to plead to you. He struggles to say, help. Your new friend looks unamused and twitches her finger. Help low, he says. Help low, by which I mean hello, of course. Looks like you're the new friend in progress, chosen by the great and beautiful Ardata. She's my savior for a uh, reason for being. I'm nothing without her. I'd hollow myself out and let her make a nest inside of me if she'd permit it. Turn away from this boy. You don't want to hear anything he has to say ever again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Don't mind him. He's always regarded himself as a comedian. Come over here. This is what I need your help with if you're going to have any value to me as a friend. You led to a dank corner of this. Well, you're gonna call it like you see it. It's a dungeon. Your new friend is a dungeon full of sad, suffering children, and presumably a monster lurking somewhere in here as well. It's not ideal. <laughs> Not ideal. <clears throat> and again, social beggars like yourself can't be choosers. I've been having an awful time with it. You can do it for me. It will save me time. You look at the thing in question. You doubt she's been having an awful time with it. You doubt this because it's still in its box, looking completely untouched since it was brought down here. It's a box containing a table? A table that looks ominously like it was designed to keep a person strapped to its surface. Ikea brand, of course. I will need you to assemble it. Here's a screwdriver, in case you need it. I will assume other required tools are contained within the box. Take the screwdriver with your non-broken arm. This isn't exactly what you had in mind. You don't know what you had in mind, really. Warm meal, friendly banter, perhaps a sling for your arm, or medial balm for your limbs. You open the box without protest. Hold on, before you start, this will make for excellent content. My fans will appreciate this. Oh dear. Oh god. <laughs> he sets up a video recording device on a tripod and points it at you. A video feed comes to life on several monitors just behind you. You see in one corner of a screen an unflattering angle of your torso hunched over the furniture box. Other rectangles contain shots of the other kids and cages around the room. Those cameras are putting at them too. You had no idea this friendship came with a perk of instant stardom. Yeah, that's what I need. Now you may begin. Oh, yeah, look, look, you can see her. Um, trolls, when they're babies, uh, look like this. They're little grubs and they have like multiple limbs. And as I said, they're raised by local animals, local fauna. And it looks like this is some kind of spider or tick, mite, some other arachnid. There's only so many arachnids. Um, 
Which would make sense because the only other blue blood I know of was also raised by a spider. She's suddenly sitting in a comfortable looking chair facing you, holding a chalice, switching around some viscous liquid it contains. You have all the parts spread on the floor, organized according to their label and the instruction. You try to remember the last time you assembled something like this. You don't recall enjoying it, to be perfectly honest. This doesn't really look like it'll be fun at all. She frowns conspicuously. Oh, how sad for you. I'm sorry. Is this activity not to your liking? You reassure her vigorously that no, it actually looks amazing. You love shit like this. It's what you were born for, you say, as you swoosh the screwdriver around, demonstrating your plainly evident skill with this tool. Forget the thing you just thought. Completely arbitrary and wrong thoughts pop in your head all the time. It meant nothing, you swear. Oh boy. Mm hmm. Yes, I hear that a lot. Continue. Oh god. You open a little bag full of screws. Jesus, there's like 50 screws to this thing. Where could most of these screws possibly even go? Judging from the picture, the table doesn't even seem that complicated. You look at your screwdrivers, then the screws. <laughs> Every single one of them requires an Allen wrench. Does this thing even come with an Allen wrench? The instruction seems to suggest that it does. <laughs> this is video games, everyone. A dominatrix space bitch is forcing me with the power of my controls to put together an Ikea table. This is video games right here. I couldn't be happier. I am more pleased with this than I have been with any other video game in the last long time. <laughs> you look around but don't see one. Do you open the bag too forcefully? Alan Wrench go bouncing off into a dark dungeon crevasse nearby. Maybe you lost some of the screws too. Damn it. Begin to sweat and look around nervously. Check out each one of the parts. Notes down here, you give the screwdriver a little tighter. You wonder what to do next. I'm gonna do my best. Decided it'd be best not to complain about the missing Allen wrench. Your friend would probably consider it bad form. You'll make do and twisting all the screws by hand as best you can. Your broken arm isn't making this easier. You favor the other one and prop pieces into place precariously. Ah, I love alliteration. Leaning against each other while you nudge them into position with your legs and the screw holes align. It's really frustrating work, you're not gonna lie. As, you tw as you're twisting in the first screw, the groove slip and the screw is stuck. You've already turned it too tight. And now it's hard to get out. You twist and reverse harder, but your fingers slip and the table pieces start to slide. They're gonna fall. You have to catch them, but it's too late. The heavy piece tips over and slams you in the broken ribs on the way to the floor. It's the floor with a bang. The stuck screw pops out and goes, 50, uh, goes bouncing 10 or 15 feet away, settling deep underneath a piece of dungeon furniture. God, you're probably gonna need to get that. Here, light chuckle. Good. Good. Takes another sip from her chalice and it settles more comfortably into her chair. Is she enjoying this? You think she's enjoying you struggle to put this stupid thing together, maybe a little too much. Nevertheless, you continue. Friend is a friend, and you don't like to let your friends down. You've committed yourself to this project. I sure did with my one little text box I clicked. You will get the screw out from under there a bit later. Maybe when you need the final screw. Turn your attention back to the table pieces and try a different strategy. Place the biggest part to have a platform flat on the floor. The legs will be pointing upward where they attached. Position one leg on the right spot in alignment with the holes. Sit on the table platform and steady the leg with your feet. Grab another screw and concentrate. Mm-hmm. She sounds so pleased. It's strange, you admit, for someone watching this sort of activity... For watching this sort of activity to make someone so happy. But you have to admit to taking a certain pride in it. It's wonderful, actually, to feel useful, wanted. Important, even, if only somewhat menially. To a great new friend who has discovered a way for your talents to improve her life. Out of the corner of your eye, you notice from the caged kids reaching out with his hand. He's concentrating. Then you notice the screw you lost slowly slide out from underneath it. It's hiding place. Interesting. We get some telekinesis. It would make sense if he's a rust blood, because I think Tavros has that? Or maybe Aradia, but both of them are low tier. Nice. Everyone's working like a team down here. Aradia does not look at the. Uh, hmm. Ardata does not look at the kid, but sneers a bit. She reaches towards him, and he appears to have trouble breathing. After a moment, you notice the screw slowly slides back under the thing. Mm -hmm. She releases him from his asthma, resumes her pleasant expression, and takes another sip from the chalice. You guess that was against the rules? You said to make a note of it. Your friend runs a tight shit down here? You respect that. <laughs> An hour later, you have all four legs on, plus some other accoutrement attached. You wrestle mightily with the thing to get upright using your only good arm. Seems you may have forgotten about the final missing screw. You doubt the table needed it. You decide it won't bring it up. You won't bring it up if she won't. If she won't. 
Give it a test. It's pretty wobbly since you were able to detect the screws with bare fingers, but then again, she doesn't seem to mind. She reclines and has a look on her face, which makes her appear absolutely enamored of your handiwork. She just finished a drink and the child's on the side table. Some awful looking thing crawls along the floor towards her. You gonna get a Lucis? It's like some sort of spider the size of an average dog. Its abdomen is preposterously large. Actually, you think it's a huge tick? Yeah, ticks are arachnids just like spiders. Part of the larger group, arthropods, or arthropodae. It settles in front of her. She puts her legs on top of it and crosses them. It settles under their weight and grumbles. Let's try it out, shall we? You shrug and sit down at the rickety table. You're about to lie down, she interrupts you. No. You fool. You absolute fool. What do you think you're doing? That's not what I meant. Get up. You stand up, embarrassed. Again, without looking at, towards the cage kid, she raises an arm towards him and beckons. He stares blankly and opens his own cage, which apparently wasn't locked. She shuffles vacant. He shuffles vacantly over to your table and lies down on the surface. She looks at you expectantly. You aren't sure what to do. What? You didn't think I'd be playing table stick ball in that thing, did you? You aren't sure what table stick ball is. I think that's foosball. Yeah, I think that's the troll word for foosball. Oh, you are pretty simp, aren't you? And simp. It's like a miniature version of arena stick ball. Played on a table. Got it? You don't, but you know. Now go to it. <laughs> shackle the kid's arms and legs to the table. That seems to be the right thing to do since the thing comes fitted with shackles. She gets up and lifts her huge tick-like pet. It makes more grumpy noises. Pops the enormous thing right down to the kid's chest. He appears rendered unable to protest. The tick bites the boy's neck and begins to feed. Blech. She smiles and pats its swelling abdomen. Dark rust-colored blood dribbles from the place where it is attached to the boy's neck. Ugh! Gross! I guess that the kid is rust blood like a rotten neck. Oh, is this hot dog kid? Oh, is this like, you didn't pick this one, now he does? Is this some Dragon Age origin shit? You picked this background? You picked this character, so the other characters still exist, but they got fucked up because you were the protagonist? Moments go by while well, she looks gratified at the process. Proud, almost. Then she looks at you expectantly. Well, you don't know what she means. I gotta be honest. I don't have any idea what you mean, girl. The final screw. <gasps> oh, no. You aren't going to retrieve it and screw it into wherever it needs to go? The job isn't done. I don't keep the company of many individuals who leave things unfinished, you know. <sighs> individuals is a bad one for your quirk, girl. <laughs> Ardata. Christ, I'm gonna have to remember every single one of those names. It's like 36 of them, right? Of course, what are you thinking? Should have known your friend wouldn't let that go unnoticed. Actually, you feel like an idiot for thinking it would. Sure I do. You sit very low to the ground on your knees, placing your cheek just above the dark floor. You peer under the large edifice. It's dark in there. It goes back a ways. Lots of room for that darn little screw to roll. Take a few pitiful swipes with your good arm and come up empty. Must be further back. You think you can see it? Yeah, it must be. Just a little further. You have an idea? A tool would be handy. Guess the screwdriver will come in handy after all. How did she know? Your new friend must be very wise. You think you're liking her more every minute. Grab the screwdriver and feel around with it. You, yes. You got it, you think. You carefully scrape it close to yourself and pick it up. Go back to the table and find the one remaining hole left unscrewed. You slide on the table as a mechanic with the car. There it is. The table is creaking and wobbling a bit now. Tick is really getting into its dinner, it seems. All the loose screws in the table have added up to give a lot of, uh, have added up to a lot of give and leeway in the overall stability of the furnishing. Maybe the final screw will help. Um, I wanted to mention this. A lot of other, uh, some other Luci have actually, Luci is the plural that they say it is, but that's inconsistent. Sometimes they say Lucis is. Depends on which character says that, actually. So it's consistent in the comic with, whatever, it's a long story. Um, but there is example of other Luci needing to eat trolls to survive. Sometimes it's just like the infant form, the little, the little grub girl on the wall. They eat those things. Um, but sometimes it's actually, they need to eat, uh, teenage or adult trolls. Uh, and one particularly nasty Lucis actually eats other Luci. Um, 
I mention this because the other, the girl I keep mentioning, Vriska, the girl with the same blood color as this one, Ardata, um, she is notorious for having Spider Mom as her loses, who eats trolls. Anyway, Ardata has returned to the setup of the monitors, due to adjusting some settings on the feed, controlling the zoom of the camera, and typing some remarks into a chat window. Hmm, this is very good material today. It's not often that I can provide content of this caliber to my subscribers. Go on, complete your project. This will be very good. I don't like where this is going. <laughs> Still think it's weird she likes watching you put together furniture, put furniture together so much, but you're not one to judge friends. Sounds like a great way to lose friends, honestly. It's true in the last true, but the stresses on the table are causing the holes to be misaligned. This won't be easy. The huge tick shifts its grotesque body above you, causing the table to creak loudly. You nervously slide halfway out from under the table to check it out. Then a loud pop, and the sound of scraping metal. Six or seven screws shoot out of the desk like rivets in a sinking submarine. What a piece of shit this thing is, you think a little too late. You really needed that Allen wrench. All four legs splay dramatically out from underneath it at once, like a baby deer on ice. <laughs> The table platform comes crushing down on your lower torso, breaking your pelvis. You bellow in pain and flail to pull yourself out. You forget you're still holding the screwdriver. In your desperate flaying, you plunge the screwdriver into the fat abdomen of the tick, which begins gushing rust blood with great force, praying in your tiny body and face. He starts thrashing wildly and screaming. You can't see your new friend due to the blood in your eyes, but you can't imagine she's thrilled what's going on here. Your annihilated pelvis is in perfect agony. You have to get your miserable torso out from under this shitty table. You have an idea. With your broken arm, you start slapping the big ass of the screaming tick. <laughs> with the screaming tick while yelling, yeehaw. You clutch the screwdriver handle with your other hand hard. The blood gushing monster starts kicking and rearing and then blasts off across the dungeon floor like a pig at rodeo. You hold on for dear life, still blind, but your plan works. When you pull out from under the tomb you spent the last hour constructing for yourself. Your pelvis isn't ruins, but at least you're free now, and riding like the wind. As you and the blood spewing Tig go tearing around the room, crashing into stuff, you are more crying. You guess our data became distracted enough by your foolish display to cease her paralyz paralyzation method on him? Or maybe distract is the wrong word. Maybe she's disappointed by your foolishness? Oh god, you might be blowing it right now. Priorities. Tig certainly is. The tick swerves suddenly and starts running up the stairs. Ow, 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 ow. Your brittle pelvis feels every step on the way up. <laughs> Careens through the rest of the hive and crashes the front door and comes to a sudden halt. Catapulted violently over its backside and itself 50 yards through the air. That's 50 meters for our uh, Brits. Land on your ass and wipe the blood from your eyes. That was embarrassing, but everyone makes mistakes, right? You still salvage this friendship. You know you can. You turn back to look at her hive. Ardata is standing in the door with a furious look on her face. She's flipping you off. You will not be my friend. Rejection! Oh, fuck! So, it's important to mention that Homestuck is actually one story of a comic called MS Paint Adventures. And it's called that because it was originally drawn in MS Paint, which is what we've got here. Wow, rejection. Oh, that's it. So she was bloodthirst, I guess, and then the hot dog boy is blood brought worst. Wow, yeah, there's fucking 36 new trolls. Jesus Christ. And some of them are twins. These two are twins. God help me. Um, so it's good to mention this now. I'm going to do I'm gonna do one run of every single troll. I might do another one later on stream or something, but um this game's cheap. It's not free, but it is cheap, and it's a visual novel. It's not like there's a lot of content in it. I mean, there is, but, I mean, fucking look at it. There's 36, yeah, 36 of each one of those. So each one is like an hour. So you spend like two bucks, you get an hour of each thing, assuming you do it once. This is the, this is the kind of game that I would love to make. This is a cool little visual novel project. Um... But yes, as I said, just so you have a reason to buy it yourself, I will do one ending, I will do one full storyline for each troll. And I must say, I'm a little disappointed that I got the bad end for Ardata. But, uh, we'll, uh, we'll see. Um, 
I'm definitely going to do a few more. I don't know if I'm going to do all of them. I might do all of them, actually. But, uh, yeah. I've been Alfred. This has been, what's this fucking game called? Hive Swap Friend Sim. Yeah, that's the full name of the game. It's been Hive Swap Friend Sim. And I'll see you guys next time.